Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Anchor Star Wealth Market Update. I'm your host, Allison Anchor Star, and today we'll be talking about the recent bounce in the overall market as well as the outlook for Disney ahead of this afternoon's earnings. And our question for the day is for today is one many you all have. When will all of us get our tax forms? But before we begin, as a reminder, this is a financial education presentation and should not be construed as personal financial advice. Full disclaimer information is available at anchorstarwealth.com. Good morning, Steve. Yesterday was a strong day in the market and the futures are up big this morning. What does this mean? The sell-off is over? Hey, good morning, Allison, and welcome, everybody. Uh, Well, uh, great question, right? We don't know for sure if it's over, but certainly things are looking a lot better. Uh, When you look at the overall, uh, this is a one-year chart of the SPY, again, the S&P 500 is what we're looking at here. And you look at the upper right-hand portion, you can see, okay, uh, we had the bottom here uh, last week or so. We had that nice three-day up day three up day move kind of consolidated from there. And it really looks like we're setting up, especially with today. You know, this is yesterday right here, but today being a big uh, green day already before the market opens, uh, certainly setting up for success. Uh, When you look specifically, well, actually, I want to show you one other thing while we're in this chart is down here at the indicators, we don't use these a whole lot, but really the market's still showing that overall it's oversold. So are you excited about putting money to work here? Well, excuse me, you wish you would have put it to work, you know, a couple of weeks ago, but there's a lot of risks there, right? Uh, but you can still put money to work here. The worst may not be over, uh, but certainly, um, you know, it's starting to look a lot better. Here is a, a three-year chart. So it's often good to really zoom out a little bit and look at three years. So here's your big COVID sell-off, right? So if you kind of, if, if COVID didn't happen, Uh, This is almost a straight line up, you know, stair step up. And then every now and then the market takes the elevator down, which it did here, uh, you know, at the beginning of uh, January. So overall, the SPY is not that far from its highs. Now, a little different story in technology, which is the NASDAQ, which is QQQ. As you can see, the Qs are a little further away from uh, their their highs there. So really, uh, you know, in my opinion, Uh, I think you're safe to put money work here. We've been, as a company, we've been buying all the way through this dip. So kind of excited to uh, see this move higher, especially in technology. Switching gears to Disney. Disney releases earnings after the bell today. What do you expect? And is Disney a good long-term investment? Well, sure. Uh, Here's Disney's three-year chart. So when you think of Disney, you have to think of everything that's within uh, their universe, right? So they they have their mer- they have their parks. Obviously, is kind of the 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 big staple, if you will. Then they have all the money they make off of merchandising. They have content now uh, with Disney Plus, and you know they do own things like ESPN. Um, so we'll kind of talk about each of those. So when you think of you know the COVID sell off, obviously an amusement park uh, that requires people to be in the park is going to take a hit significantly. Uh, when a pandemic breaks out. And you saw that back here. So things were going fine for Disney. And then this is March of 2020 and the, the big sell-off as we officially went into the to the pandemic. Then it became a reopening play as we beat COVID over the series of most of uh, 2020. Okay, did we really beat it? Well, we thought we beat it, remember? So it was, it was kind of we did and then earnings came back and well they started they lost less i guess if you will Uh, and that's when the market kind of or the excuse me disney started making new highs came up all the way to 200 dollars from a low of you know wouldn't you like to be the person that bought there at 7907 in the middle of the pandemic right that was the the lock and load uh, speech that i gave back then and sent out to everybody the so you know it went all the way up to 200 now it's kind of reset to what i would call a good valuation um, so from the park perspective, they've raised ticket prices. They went on a reservation system. They've done everything to ensure that the company stays safe as far as, you know, people not catching COVID and things, but you're still kind of, it's kind of funny. You're still standing in line with uh, a lot of uh, random new best friends, right? As far as Disney content, I'm really excited out there because they, they've, they've competed very well in the space with their Disney plus channel and the, the, the stuff that the, shows they have out are quality. So it's kind of like the Apple model 
of putting out less content, but more premium content, if you will, versus a Netflix or all of the other players that are just putting as much out there as possible uh, to get eyeballs on. So excited about the content space. It is competitive, obviously, uh, but they're, they're really putting, you know, and that's kind of their bread and butter from the original movies and things from, from way back. So really kind of excited about that. And then the last one, what is a kind of a perennial money loser for them is ESPN. Uh, again, they own all of the ESP chan ESPN channels, which it seems like there's a million of them. And th that department struggles, right? So uh, do eventually, you know, eventually should should or will Disney spin off ESPN? I, I think there's some some idea that they should, whether they do or not. It'd be nice to move that that off their uh, balance sheet. Last question. When should people expect to get their tax forms? Well, tax forms are a little bit of a challenge because the, uh, you know, everybody gets all excited to um, come up on video here. Everybody gets all excited to turn in their tax forms, right? So, and get their taxes mm -hmm. done. And I, I admire that. But the issue with the specifically uh, trying to get them done early is you may end up doing them over, right? Because you're waiting on the one tax form that you don't have or you didn't need uh, to have. So when you think of it, so the answer, the answer to the question is mid February. That's what TD Ameritrade is saying. That's what Schwab is saying. Some of the tax forms are already out. So a lot of folks will get one tax form in the mail or get notified that it's available and want to immediately set up with your CPA. I say that's premature. I would say never be, you know, the, the older you get and the more complex your investing gets, the longer you want to wait. Uh, I personally don't file till April. I do my taxes. I've I already start my taxes at the beginning of the year. I go into TurboTax. I set everything up. And then as the forms come in, I go back in and then update it all the way through. So it's kind of in a continuous state of being done uh, for most of, most of the spring, if you will. But I'm not going to actually hit the trigger and file in, until April because I want to make sure I have all the right forms and i do this professionally and i'm still concerned that i you know that i that i don't have all the right forms um but i'm in a lot of different things now that i wasn't before so in general though you can think of if you have a taxable brokerage account you will have a 1099 bravo which is a consolidated um brokerage statement b stands for brokerage statement that's going to have everything on it from your stocks your bonds your capital gains your interest uh Section 201 stuff. Uh, you could, if you use an advisor, you get to deduct your uh, invite and you know investment fees, management fees, that sort of thing. All of that stuff is on the 1099 Bravo. In the in the IRA world, if you have just a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA, you're not going to get anything right until you get the 5498, which comes out in May, and you're like, why would it come out in May? Well, remember for IRAs, you have all the way through tax filing date to fund your IRA for the previous year. So the 2021 goes by, you figure out how much income you have, you fund your IRA based off of the income limits. Remember there's some gotchas there and the more you make, the more gotchas there are. Um, so you really need to uh, think about that as far as when you wanna file. But that 5498 is just a, a bookkeeping form, if you will. If you did a backdoor Roth IRA, you're going to have a, an IRA conversion form, which is a 1099R, where you actually take the distribution and put it into your, into your Roth IRA. So look out for those 1099Rs if you did a conversion. Or if you are in taking required minimum distributions, then you're going to have a 1099R that covers all those uh, distributions as well. So that's kind of what you have. Those are the basics. If you're more advanced stuff, you may have some other 1099 miscellaneous. You may have some K1s out there. But, <clears throat> it, you know, as always, here's what I recommend is that you wait the longest you can to file. Uh, and if you can't do that because you're waiting on a big tax refund, well, you need to watch another program of mine on how to how to not do that, right? You shouldn't be waiting on a, getting back a bunch of money from the government. But as always, wait as long as possible. Make sure you have all the forms. If you have any doubt, reach out to me. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. Please submit your questions as a comment through social media or directly to our email at VIP services at anchorstarwealth.com. That's all we have for today's show. I'm Allison Anchorstar, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.